Weasel here. Welcome to turn one of Arkham Horror. The show must go on. An excerpt from the Arkham Advertiser. Director Hildred Castain has brought his vision of the King in Yellow, a revolutionary new play to the country's shores. The play, which is a period piece, describes a drama and a loss suffered by a noble family in a fictional kingdom reminiscent of the Mediterranean nations. The King in Yellow is renowned for the powerful but unorthodox philosophy that he espouses. This newspaper's theatre critic, who viewed the production in its final days in Paris, mentioned during the intermission via telegraph that he was tempted to leave after the first rather banal act, disappointed in its simplicity. He was unable to be reached for comment afterwards, however. In other news, the riots and mass hysteria in Europe have reached a lull. Authorities are unable to pinpoint a cause for the strange behaviour which seems to have been sparked by shared delusions. The colour yellow seems to play a significant part in this behaviour. OK. Right. A couple of things there. Forgot to mention at the start of uh, the previous introduction and setup, that was one of them. The other one was we actually have, if you remember in the first um, Arkham Horror playthrough I did, Cool Air, we actually had uh, a double coloured card for Ithaca, and if it got drew out, we'd have to actually fight him. Well, because we're using Lost Carcosa in the King in Yellow, we're using the blue and yellow card from the Curse of the Dark Pharaoh expansion. But here, it actually says we fight Shub Niggurath. But we're not going to do that. We're going to change it. It's going to be Haster. So, as part of the whole scenario thing, uh, we're just changing the blue and yellow card, which used to be Yugoth, but we're changing it to Lost Carcosa, if you remember. So instead of Shub Niggurath, it's going to be Haster. So that's going to go in the gate deck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle that in. I'm also going to hope that we don't get it. But it is in there. Uh, it's just one of the things that I forgot to mention um, during the setup. So, thoroughly shuffle those, give them a cut, shuffle them again, and one final cut. So there we go. That's the gate deck. Right, we're back up on, uh, on the first turn. I've been having a bit of a think since I did the setup and introduction, and to be quite honest, Already, we haven't even started turn one, we're in a spot of bother. Um, with Haster requiring 8 clue tokens to shut gates, that is 48 clue tokens. If we do not get any Elder Signs, we need 48 clue tokens during this game to seal 6 gates. So what I'd normally think when that sort of thing happened would be, you know what, remember the last game we had? We shut a load of gates early. If it hadn't been so profligate with, uh, you know, spending my gate trophies, we could have won it a lot earlier. So normally I think, well, why don't we try and win it that way? We try and shut four gates early, keep hold of the gate trophies, hope a gate doesn't open, and then we can go, woohoo, we win. But unfortunately, we got that bloody horrible environment card which makes it minus two to shut gates so you can go through the whole like encounters and all the rest of it in the other worlds hopefully nothing will happen then you get back into Arkham and you've got a minus two penalty so I'd rather get rid of that before I actually um, tried that sort of approach so what we're going to do is we're going to try and get as many clue tokens as we can during these early um, during the early turns. Hope something turns up. Uh, something perhaps that make us you know um, get extra clue tokens. Something like that. 
and perhaps we may go to the curiosity shop and you know we'll try and be lucky right so that's the quick chat at the start of the turn let's go to the upkeep phase right first up we have Marie Lambeau she's at uh, sorry Lambo. she's at Mars boarding house and what we're going to do well we could do with her getting a few clue tokens but she quite early could succeed at her personal story if she gets the book of Dizian and um, uses movement points from there on in to try and get a couple of spells uh, she could go to ye old magic shop she's got four dollars but I think each spell I'm sure each spell costs five dollars so um, that's not gonna work so what she's gonna do is she is gonna move her speed up to four and that'll allow her to get to the administration building where Norman Withers is he's got the book of Dizian so he will be able to hand that over so that's what she's gonna do uh, other than that uh, I think she's fine so she oh in fact no she doesn't have to move the speed up because she's got plus one speed anyway so we'll keep that back at three and we won't move anything no nope. we'll just keep the stink um, because uh, she might have to sneak past some monsters later on so we won't actually move anything so she's going to use a three speed for three movement points and a plus one speed skill just to bump into uh, Norman at the administration building right next up is Lola Hayes here we are with Lola what Lola's going to do is ideally I'd like her to give the Kabbalah of Sabbath to Min because she needs to read tomes and stuff and she'll uh, succeed in her personal story but there are two clue tokens at Independent Square they're too good to pass up Independent Square is a very high frequency gate we need to get somebody in there get those clues before they disappear especially in this game where we need so many so she's going to move two spaces into Independent Square and get those clues. Also, Independent Square is a good location for getting an ally. I think it's the, um, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but there's a psychic who's got a stall there. I think um, Roland Banks got her as an ally last turn. Can't remember her bloody name, but whatever it is. There is a chance that she could get an ally and then she could succeed at her personal story. So she's going to go there to Independent Square, pick up those two clues. I don't think she needs to move anything, so we're just going to keep it as it is. Right, next up is Min. Here we are with Min, the last of Charlie's Angels. Right, ideally, we want her straight away to read The King in Yellow. She's fully up on sanity and stuff and get it out of the way get a clue token on her personal story and um, we can sort of really crack on she'll do that in the movement phase she has to spend two movement points let's get some law minus two now currently I, I can set it up anywhere so I'm gonna stick it up to four she needs to spend two clue uh, two sorry movement points so I'm going to stick her up to five because I want to use uh, three because I think she's going to go to the administration building as well um, and her Norman Withers and Marie Lambeau will have a massive like sort of trading thing and uh, see what's best for everybody right so I think that's in that's it for Min next up is Norman with us hi Norm well if the other three are Charlie's Angels here we are with Bosley what Bosley's gonna do is fortunately he's the last person to go so he's gonna have an opportunity to trade with Min and Marie 
and then what's he going to do now if you haven't got that horrible environment card I'd have been tempted to send him straight in the woods uh, to close the gate because he needs three click uh, gate tokens uh, gate trophies for his personal story I'd have sent him in there I wouldn't have bothered about sealing it he'd have got the gate trophy got out quickly with find gate and everything had been a laugh but the fact is I don't know what that gate is because of my house rule it could be a relay if it's minus three he's only got a law of five with minus two he wouldn't be able to shut it and we'd be just stood there like goons I mean it could be something like the dreamlands at plus one but I don't know so and plus the fact that the former spawn is sat there getting in everyone's way so what I'm going to do is he's going to do all that trading and then he's going to get some clues so we'll send him off for a clue first um, as soon as we've done all the trading uh, I think I'll send him to the science building so he's just going to move to the science building get an extra clue um, really early on in the game when you've got so many clues on the board we've got to pick up as many as possible so in fact thinking about it the science building isn't very high frequency so he's got a movement of two yeah. so three is his maximum movement I'm going to move that up to three and then see if there's a more high frequency gate that he can get to yeah he can get to the witch house he's going to go to the witch house that's quite high frequency so um, he'll go there he can't get to anything like the black cave the graveyard or anything else so or the unvisit oh no he's going to in fact he's going to go to the unvisited isle because I think that's a bit more common than the witch house so he's going to go to the unvisited isle so that's about as good as I think we can do uh, this is going to be grim um, Gonna call. Uh, I'm, I think I'm gonna be thinking a lot throughout this game. So right, let's get to the movement phase. Right, here we are. We're gonna look at the south side of Arkham. First up is Marie, and she's gonna go to the administration building. So that's one, two, three, four, and she's there with Norman. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a bit of a trade. So Norman is going to give her the book of Dijan. Not Dyson, Dijan. Say it properly. So he's going to hand that across. Uh, she's not going to be, be able to use that this turn because she's already moved. Uh, what else are we going to do? Well, Norman's going to give her one dollar. So she's now up to five. And is there anything else we're going to swap? No. He's going to keep summon the beast within. He's going to hopefully swap that with Lola at some later date. I think. Yes. Lola or Min, I think, are going to be our groin punchers. Marie and Norman, I think, are going to be our gate closers. Right. So that's it for... Uh, Marie's go. Next up is Lola Hayes. Here we are with Lola. And Lola, quite easy. One, two, and she's going to pick up those two clue tokens. We can't afford to let these go. So she now has four clue tokens. Ordinarily, she'd be one off sealing the gate, but she's four off because we've got half. But what can you do? Right, so that's Lola's turn. Next is Min. Here we are, back with Min. And she's going to join up with the other two. So she's going to go one, two, three. So we've got three investigators in the administration building. They've all heard there's something crazy going on. And they all want to chat about it. So, what are we going to do? Well, first of all, Min... Just to remember, it's the movement phase. She had five movement. She only spent three. So she's exhausting two of those movement points to make a law minus two check. Her law is four. So she's got two dice. Let's 
just check that's in. It is. Come on, we need a success. A six. Min, you're a star. Right, so we've got a six, we've got a success. So what happens when you have a success reading the king in yellow? Let's have a look. If you pass, gain four clue tokens and lose one sanity. Discard the king in yellow. Well, we don't want it. It's a horrible book. It sends people zany, man. So we'll get rid of that. But we get four clue tokens. Woohoo! One, two, three, four. Invaluable. Absolutely invaluable. So Min now has six. It's still not enough to shut a gate, but she has six clue tokens. She loses one sanity. But she's still got five left. Now, what else is she going to do? Well, what we need... Oh, I'll tell you what else she's going to do. I nearly forgot. We take an extra clue token from the supply, and that is going to go on her personal story card. Remember, she needs, oh, what is it, how many? I'll just check, three clue tokens. As soon as she gets three clue tokens on that personal story card, she has achieved. She's achieved her personal story. Now, Norman is giving the book of Dijan to Marie, because I think it's, it's better for her. But what we'll try and do is uh, get Lola Hayes and a Cabala of Saboth. That'll be two clue tokens, and then we'll try and find another one somewhere. Okay, that's that. Is there anything else that Min, Norman, and Marie want to swap? Now, Min has got four dollars. And you know what? I think Min is going to be a gate closer. Is she going to be a groin puncher or a gate closer? Ooh, who's going to be better? Let's have a look. Law, fight, fact. I think Min's going to be better at closing gates than Marie is. I think Marie is going to be the groin puncher. So, because of that, Min is going to keep the Derringer. And she's going to give the revolver to Marie. So she's got the enchanted knife and the, and the magical weapon. And she's also going to give Marie... Because I think Marie's going to stay in Arkham. Two dollars. So she may well be going up to somewhere like the Curiosity Shop. And shopping for the all-important Elder Sign. Right, that's pretty cool. Okay, so that's Min's go. And next up is Norman Withers. Hey Norm. Right, it's Norm. He's finally going to move, he's going to leave the ladies at the administration building and he's going to go one, two, three and he's going to pick up the clue at the unvisited aisle. So he also now has four clue tokens. Okie dokie, that's the end of the movement phase. Next up is the Arkham encounter phase. the Arkham Encounter phase and first up is Marie. So she's at the administration building. Now you can spend eight dollars. Have a look at two skills and uh, pick the one you like. But she hasn't got eight dollars, she's only got seven. So she's going to have a normal location encounter which is the Miskatonic yellow deck. Uh, this does have the King in Yellow location um, cards in, so we'll give them a shuffle and see what we get. And we're in the administration building. You are asked to speak to the students regarding Lost Carcosa. Pass a law minus one check to gain one dollar for each success you roll. All oh, right, so at least it hasn't. If we don't do it, at least there's nothing bad. So Marie has a law of three. So she's going to get two dice. She 
gets a dollar for each success. And she gets one success. So, she gets a dollar. She's now up to eight dollars. Good stuff. Put that deck back. Whoop. And she gets a dollar. So, not a bad, not a bad, uh, not a bad encounter. Right, put that there. Right, next up we have Lola Hayes at Independent Square. Here we have Lola, Independent Square, which is the white deck. And I don't mind telling you all that what we could do here is getting the ally card. So come on. The only reason I've said this before I drew it out is I'm hoping that my precognition is going to work. Okay. Plant. Independent square. This doesn't look like it. Pass a sneak minus two check to catch a glimpse of the actors re rehearsing for the play. Oh, it's again two clue tokens. What's a sneak? A sneak's one. So, it's an auto fail. Urgh. I have a feeling this isn't going to be good. If you fail, no sooner do they notice you than a monster appears. Oh, God. Good start. Oh, quick look. Oh, I have. Her and Marie have the survivor's relationship card. Either you or your partner can exhaust this card before making an evade check to get plus one. So, a sneak's one. She's got that. That gives us two sneak. So, depending on what horrible monster comes out, we might have a chance to evade it. Okay. Pick something easy. Right, what's gonna come out? It is. Is that a maniac? It is a maniac. Oh, we got lucky, kids, we got lucky. So, no sanity check. We get plus one on the die, and it's only one toughness. She's not going to evade this boy. What she's going to do to this boy is she's going to shoot it in the face. She's got a rifle, which is plus five. She's got plus three fight. That's eight dice. She's got nine dice, because that's plus one. Oh, man. This guy is in bad trouble, and he doesn't even know it yet. So let's get nine dice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we only need one success. Lola, you're not messing them out. Come on. Show him your mean business. There we go. Three successes. It's good night, Vienna. Monster trophy. All ready for Lola. I knew she was a groin puncher. Brilliant. Let's get that in there. Absolutely fantastic stuff. That's how we like to start a game. An early kick ass sort of thing. Yes. Lola. Brilliant. Right, so that's that sorted. Next up is Min. Min's at the administration building. She doesn't have eight dollars either, so she's not going to bother with the skills or anything. She's going to have a Miskatonic University location deck encounter. So we'll give him a quick shuffle. And let's see what we get. Oh, this looks a bit long. Which is always bad. Right, here we go. Administration building. A professor of the occult pays you to post signs throughout campus that he that he claims will ward off danger. However, the signs carry their own danger. Gain four dollars, but pass a will minus two check or lose two sanity. So at least she gains four dollars. What's a will? A will's two. Ah! So she loses two sanity. Right, so she's down to three sanity because she's automatically failed that, unfortunately. 
Um, she does gain four dollars. So she's got how much? She's got two. So I'll give her five and we'll put one back. She's got six dollars. Put the one back and we'll put that back. Ah. I don't like her losing so much sanity so early. She's down to three. But she's still in the same area as Marie. So what she's going to do, she's going to give Marie that $5 and take one back. So she's back to $2. But Marie is now loaded. Marie is loaded, baby. Marie's got plenty of money to get up to Curious Shop and hopefully... Hopefully, 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 get an elder sign. Okay, next up is Norman Withers. Hey, Norm. I'm sorry, viewers, I'm not going to get tired of that. Right, unvisited aisle. I hate the unvisited aisle. Um, we're going to set the green deck, which is the merchant di district deck. And what we're going to happen? What's going to happen is we're going to get a terrible location encounter. Because that's all you seem to get at the unvisited aisle. But it's worth it to get the clue token before uh, a gate opens. Right, cut it. And let's see what absolutely appalling... Oh, look at the size of this. Oh, excuse me. Locking the camera. And again... You come across a man examining some old bones. Oh, it might be an ally. Pass a sneak minus one check to get close enough to see what he's doing. Right. Sneak. He sneaks one. Bah. Right, he's automatically failed. He finally notices you and is impressed with your skills. Introducing himself as John Legras. Take his ally account if it's available. Blah, 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 blah. Otherwise, he shares a meal. Well, we don't get the meal. Um, he notices us and basically ignores us. So nothing happens. Bah! We could have done with an ally. But nothing bad happened, which is rare for the unvisited aisle. So next time I go there, I'll make such a song and dance about it again that we'll get a similar card. Okay, so that's it for Norman Withers. That's the end of the Arkham Encounter phase. We've got nobody in another world, so it's straight on to the laugh and chuckle phase. Here we are at Sunny Arkham. Let's get the deck of horrors and see what we've got. Okay, next up is a headline. Oh, God. We've got another gate at the woods, but we've already got one. So, second turn, we've got a monster surge. Well, this is great. Ah, dear me. Well, we've, uh, it's the highest number, either the number of investigators or the number of gates. The number of investigators is obviously the highest, which is four, so we get four monsters. Let's get the bag of nastiness. Um, they're all going to go around the woods. So... The woods gate is going to have quite a few uh, monsters around it. First up is a cultist, which obviously is flying, and it's also uh, minus two on its combat uh, modifier. Next up is a Shan. God, oh, they're really good as well. Oh, dear me. Right. Third up is... Another cultist, so we've got two cultists, which aren't bad, at least they're one toughness, still. And the final one is, oh, what we're pulling out? A Loigo, and they're pigs. Right. Bah, 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 bah. Right, let's give them all stand each. Normally, you'd share them out equally between open gates, but we've only got one gate. How lucky are we to get a monster surge with one gate? So, already, it's everything's looking grim for the uh, terror track. So, there we go. Anybody who wants to seal the woods gate, 
has basically got to go through a carnival of monsters. Brilliant. Okay, so put the rest of the laugh and chuckle deck back. Let's see, some of these monsters might move away now. Uh, but first we've got to see where a clue appears. The Historical Society. Right, so that's got two clues. So we want to get someone there quick. Because clues are at a premium in this game. And in fact, thinking about it, I know we've had a monster surge, which is horrendous, this early. But because the gate didn't open in one of the other locations, we've kept the clue tokens. So in a way, that's good, because we need all the clue to tokens that we can get. So there is a small silver lining. Right, monster movement. We've got hexagons on white there first. I think we've got a hexagon. I'm sure I saw one. Yep, the form of spawn that we got first of all, that's a hexagon. So that's going into the uptown streets. Any other hexagons? No. Right, next up, what's moving on black? Slashes, triangles and stars. I think we've got a triangle. We have got a triangle, which is the Shan, which is a flying monster. So that has a look round uptown. There's no investigators in the adjacent street in Uptown, so it goes to the sky. So that's not a bad result. And slashes and stars, we haven't got any. So we've just got the two crescent moons, which are the cultists. And the square, which is LIGO, which doesn't move along with the cultists. Right. So that's that side out. Next up is the actual headline. All quiet in Arkham. Each player may pass a luck minus one check to be blessed. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, yes, come on, come on. This is what we need. Look, did they keep their look? Oh, right, Marie. Her luck's two. So she gets one dice. At least she's got a chance. It's not an auto fail. Is that in there? It is in there. Come on, Marie. Come on, Marie, get yourself blessed. One dice. Oh, no. So, unfortunately, Marie didn't manage it. Next up is Lola Hayes. Her luck's two as well. So she gets one dice. Oh, come on. Come on, Lola. Come on, Lola. Champagne, it tastes like cherry cola. Come on. Yes! Marie's blessed! Woot! Woo! Free blessing! That is fantastic! So that's in there. Next up is Min. Min has a look of zero. Ah! Oh, so she don't even get a roll. Is it worth spending a clue token? No, I don't I don't really think she should spend a clue token for that. I don't think it's on. So I won't do that. Norman with us. His looks too as well. Oh, I've done really well here, haven't I? Right, so he's going to get one dice. Come on, Norman. Hey, Norman. Five! He does it. So, there we go. That is really good for a mythos phase. Phase, sorry. To get two, two people blessed. That is fabulous. That is really good. So despite the fact we had a monster surge and everything, that has been good. That has been a good turn. Um, we just hopefully, when we come to roll for those blessings, we won't lose them first turn like we seem to do. But um, that is brilliant. That is really good. And considering the most we rolled on anyone was one dice and we managed to get like two people blessed, that's brilliant. Right, oh, so suddenly from feeling like really down and thinking we're really going to struggle in this game, I'm now feeling really down and thinking we're really going to struggle, but perhaps not as much. Um, so good stuff. 
Right, um, we managed to get a few clue tokens. We've got two people blessed. Hopefully we can move towards a couple of personal stories next turn, especially Marie. She's now got the book of uh, Dijan. Uh, hopefully we can get uh, Lola to drop off her Kabbalah of Sabbath to Min. And, well, yeah. Basically, we need to go on a clue hunt. We need as many clues as possible before gates start opening. And then we've got to get somebody to the curiosity shop and hopefully get some elder signs. So, thank you very much for watching. I think this has been another quite long turn while I've been wittering on yet again. But, um, but I've been really thinking. I think we're under the cosh. Right, anyway. Uh, thank you very much for watching turn one of... Arkham Horror, the show must go on. I hope you join me for turn two. This is Cat Weasel signing off. Toodaloo.